This video will introduce you to the basics of editing in ArcGIS. We'll use a polygon feature clause for the demonstrations. We'll show you how to start off by creating a new polygon and then digitizing existing polygons adjacent to the starting one. We'll also look at common editing functions that occur when you need to correct errors in your editing process. In ArcGIS, we can take a look at the data we're going to be using for this demo. We've got a raster black and white aerial image. We've got a polygon land use land cover, or LULC feature class. And then we've also got topology, which has been established for that polygon feature class. Topology is not a requirement for editing, but it certainly is handy. You can see that in the catalog pane, my feature class and topology are both contained within a feature dataset, whereas the raster imagery is stored outside of the geo database. I've gone ahead and set up an attribute field to store the land use land cover codes for my polygon feature class ahead of time. You can see that in addition to the required geodatabase attributes, it has one for land use land cover classes, and then it has a domain applied. This will ensure that I choose only the appropriate attribute for the land use land cover code from the drop down list provided by the domain. Domains are certainly not required for editing, but they help to improve the integrity of your attributes. Now let's start editing our features. My polygon feature class for land use land cover is currently empty. So from the edit menu, I'm going to select the feature class I want to edit, then click on the create button. This launches the create features pane. Because I don't have any existing polygons, I'm going to click on the icon for create new polygons. I'm going to digitize a polygon, a portion of the river that we see here in the imagery. Once I'm finished digitizing the polygon, I'll want to assign it the appropriate attribute. This is where my domain comes in very handy. When I open the attribute pane, you can see that I'm only given a list from the domain of potential land use land cover codes, rather than having to either remember the code or type it in, which is subject to error. When digitizing features such as land use land cover, I want to ensure that I don't have overlapping polygons, so I'm not double counting the landscape. So to draw an adjacent polygon to the polygon that I just digitized, I'm going to use the Autocomplete Polygon tool and select it from the Create Features pane. When using the Autocomplete Polygon, the key thing to remember is that you have to start inside a polygon and finish inside another polygon. In this example, I'm digitizing the agricultural field adjacent to the river. You see that I've successfully created a second polygon and that it is adjacent to the existing polygon and it doesn't appear that there are any overlapping boundaries. I'm going to assign it the appropriate LULC code, and now we can go into the topology and confirm that there are no overlapping errors. To check for topology errors, I'm selecting the topology from the drop-down menu, then going in, zooming to the extent of my features, and validating the topology. Because I have a feature selected, I'm just going to clear the selection so that it's easier for me to see the topology errors. And I have one, the universal polygon gap, which is to be expected. Now let's look at a situation in which I have two non-adjacent polygons, so I'm creating a new polygon using just the standard Create Polygon Feature tool, and then I want to use the Autocomplete Polygon tool to create a polygon that borders these two existing polygons. In this case, I'm going to start inside one polygon, digitize inside of the second polygon, and then finish inside of the first polygon. The Autocomplete Polygon tool takes into account the boundaries of both polygons that I've crossed over, producing a topologically correct and consistent data set. You may have a situation in which you have two polygons that are better represented by a single entity. In this situation, we have two LULC polygons with the same forest code, so it's better to represent them as a single polygon. I'm selecting them with the Select tool, choosing the Merge tool, and then choosing the polygon whose attributes I want them to consume when they're merged. Once I've selected that polygon, I'm going to click on the Merge button, and I've created a single polygon from the two individual polygons. The opposite situation is when you want to cut a polygon into two. Make sure the polygon is selected, then use the Split tool, both starting outside and finishing outside the polygon you want to cut in half. You now have two separate polygons with two separate attributes. You may occasionally run into situations where you've inadvertently merged two non-adjacent polygons. In such a situation, these separate polygons contain a single record within the attribute table. This is valid for some types of mapping, such as the state of Hawaii being a single record, but it's not good for land use land cover mapping, like we're showing in this example. To fix this, 
you're going to select the polygon and then from your tools menu select the explode tool. The explode tool breaks down non-adjacent polygons into separate individual polygons each with their own attribute record. Sometimes you have these messy situations in which you need to both fix existing digitizing errors and create new polygons. Let's take a look at one of these. First, I'm going to digitize a new polygon using the Autocomplete Polygon tool to fill in the gap between these two polygons. I'm continuing to use the Autocomplete Polygon tool to also add in a small adjacent polygon. To deal with the polygon that was digitized incorrectly, I'm going to use the Select tool to select it, and then I'm going to use the Split tool to cut off the portion that should not be included within that particular land use land cover class. Because all these other polygons represent a single land use land cover class, I'm going to select them all using the select tool and then merge them using the merge tool. This will create a single polygon and single record within the attribute table. Let's take a look at another situation in which we need to fix some digitizing errors. First we have this polygon here, clearly digitized incorrectly. We can use the reshape tool for the portion of the polygon that does not border any other polygons. This is really important. The reshape tool should only be used for polygons that do not border any adjacent polygons, otherwise you can create topology errors. For this polygon, which does border another polygon, just like we did in the previous example, we're going to use the split tool to cut out the offending portion. We then can select the two polygons that we want to represent a single polygon using the selection tool and then use the merge tool to merge those polygons so that we have a single polygon and single attribute record representing one land use land cover class. Periodically, it's a good idea to save our edits. Saving our edits is different than saving the ArcGIS Pro project. You should save your edits to ensure that you've preserved any modifications you've made to either features or the attributes of those features. When saving your edits, you can expand the show edits to display all the edits that you've made since the last save operation. It's also a good idea to save your project to preserve your symbology along with your location and layout in the map. This video walks you through some of the basics of editing the polygon feature class. For this example, the polygon feature class was stored within a geodatabase and we had topology rules established ahead of time. If you need help on establishing topology rules or editing topology, please see the other video in the series.